Hi, it's Anders again. This is episode six of A Well-Tempered Hacker. I've noticed some of you picking up on the Bach reference. That's very good, well done. This time we're gonna look at building a home automation system with the Raspberry Pi. I'm not doing what most people do though. This isn't a centrally controlled system with a few fairly unintelligent uh, peers on the edges. The Raspberry Pi is cheap. It's cheap enough to fit in every single light switch and wall socket in your house. So I decided to start a project to do exactly that. A decentralized home automation system based on the Raspberry Pi and written in Node.js. Here's what I've built so far. This is a reference design for a combination light switch and wall socket. This is just enough hardware to allow me to start writing the software and making it useful. This is the Raspberry Pi. I have a Wi-Fi USB device so I can get connected to the network. Notice I'm not using Ethernet, uh, although I could. I've got a 4 gig chip on here, and then this ribbon cable pops over to this breakout board that allows me to uh, put in these two little, very hard to see, transistors which act as switches, uh, low power switches, GPIO level, 3.3 volt switches, and then I've also got a uh, analog to digital converter there which I use to sense uh, power. So as you can see there are some wires here, and one goes to the switch, just a standard wall switch uh, run at 3.3 volts, so not very, not very exciting there. And then the other wires, there are two sets, go to these plugs. And these are independently switchable plugs, and uh, I use a software relay to get that done. So when this whole system is up and running, this is what you should see. So now I've got this system all plugged up. I have some power running to the Raspberry Pi, and as you can see the lights are on, so it's up and running, uh, as is this board. I have in the sockets, they're independently controlled, so I have two different lights set up to this. I've got this one here, which is that lamp, and then the black one goes to this lamp, the CFL lamp. And what we're going to do is I've got this MacBook Air here and it is SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi so I'm going to just run Node Light Switch, this little app that I wrote and uh, you can see the, it says the button is pressed the value is zero so here's the button I'm going to throw it and the light goes on you can see there's another line that says the value is one I'll throw it again, it goes to zero, light goes on and off, as you would expect. That's interesting, but let's do something a little bit better. Now let's try an app called Multi-Light Switch that I have here. I'm going to hit go on that, and you'll notice some network stuff happens. We'll get into that later, but so now what this has done is, is set this switch up to independently control two different lights but with only one light switch. So imagine your light switch you throw it once and one light goes on, you throw it again and the other one goes on, you throw it again and yet another one goes, they're both on together, you throw it again and they're both off. So to see that again, on one, on two, both on, both off. Every time I throw the switch and these lights go on and off, I, you can see that the switch state cycles from 0 to 3, so four different settings. And what's actually happening over the network is the state of this light switch is being published to a uh, something similar to tw uh, Twitter, but it's a, an internal only service. So whoever is interested in this light switch, for example, this uh, socket is interested, it starts listening over the network to cues that happen and the lights go on and off like that. So let's take a look at the way that works. So lightswitch.js um, takes a second to load. The Raspberry Pi isn't exactly the fastest machine in the world. I set up a couple of things here. This button and this LED uh, variable, they're just GPIOs pointing at uh, pin 14 and 23. And then I set this little state variable. So I have this function here called setLight 
and it, it just writes out whatever the value is. But it does light writes, uh, lead write sync values. So for this lead up here, I'm going to write the value of whatever I'm given. And then I'm going to start up a button watch. And if I have an error, I'm going to throw an error. But if, if my state is 1, I'm going to set the state to 0, else 1. And then I'm going to set the light to that state. So it's going to rerun this whole thing again. So it's just going to be in this infinite loop, essentially. And then here I am, the last thing I do, I actually start this function, set light, and I go around and around. Uh, so that's how that very simple on-off light switch works. Um, but we're going to take a look, once I get a shell back here, at the multi light switch. And this is the one that has a little bit more state. And you'll notice some network stuff in here that you can essentially ignore. Uh, I'm using MQTT, which is a very lightweight TCP channel, essentially. And uh, this time I've got a button and I've got two LEDs. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create this client, which is essentially a pub sub system. So uh, I'm going to have network capability as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write sync the state percent to uh, a 0 or a 1. Uh, and then the other light, I'm going to uh, sync state percent 3, which is, uh, so this one's going to flip every time I throw the switch, and the other one is going to flip every other time I throw the switch. Makes that pattern that we were looking at before. Then I do this uh, publish. I send the payload being the state. I'm just letting the network know whatever the button, whatever the switch is set to. Um, then I do the same switching of the state. If state is bigger than 3, I, I switch it back down to 0. So it just cycles up. You can see I have state++, plus plus, so it cycles up. Uh, the rest of this has to do with the network stuff, and really all I'm doing is notifying the network of what's going on. The more interesting thing at the end of the day is to have the light switch published separately from the device that is going to read the info. So the, the socket would, would subscribe separately to the switch and, and it would go that way. This just happens my build out, my hardware is all in one device right now. Um, so that's the uh, that's the, a small view of the, the software, at least on the front end. Let's take a quick look at how this hardware works. First thing, of course, I'm going to do is unplug everything. So I'm sure I'm not going to get zapped. So I mentioned earlier that I was using solid state relays to get this done. These are the solid state relays. These are made by Sharp and they are uh, relatively high capacity. They're 16 amps. I decided to go a little high on that because uh, might make uh, might make it more safe than, than going low. Uh, so I've got two of those and they independently control right there the the sockets. And it's very simple uh, but it, uh, it works quite well. And uh, this switch, the button switch, is just exactly as you would imagine. It's, it's just strictly that wire tied to the, the switch and that's it. Nothing else interesting there. I also mentioned on my board build out that I have this analog to digital converter right here. It's kind of hard to see. But that little device is a 12-bit analog to digital converter. I use it to sense the power flow across the uh, each of these sockets. I'm not doing that right now. I don't have that in the circuit right now. But uh, I do have that uh, working. I have a Hall effect sensor that measures the current flow, so we'll be able to track that. The Raspberry Pi has no analog inputs, so you have to build it yourself. And that's, that's actually what this little pot is uh, starting to, to simulate right now. Uh, it actually simulates so I can uh, read the, the input. And the, re the way that I'm doing this, this 12-bit ADC is pushing data back to the Raspberry Pi through SPI. Some of these pins here you can see MSI, uh, MISO, and the other one there, MOSI, this master out slave in, there's master in slave out, and that's SPI or SPI, 
and so I actually have written a driver to actually I haven't written it I've, I've uh, greatly added to one that already existed on GitHub and that's how I read it I'm able to read that thing uh, many many times a second so I'm able to get a very good uh, power reading so that's how that works so the last step in this project is to scale it up a bit and to do that you need a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis so I've got uh, a bunch more here and uh, I've been building these devices out into more and more sockets. So everything from your basic standard socket with a little Raspberry Pi in there uh, with all of the circuitry you see, even combined versions of the same thing. So you can, this is a, this right here is actually probably the best uh, development platform because it's, it's a light switch and it's independent sockets. Everything you need to kind of get this thing up and going and testing. You can obviously, the way I've wired this, you can just use this on the bench. Uh, you could put it into the wall too, but it's much more uh, developable on the bench. So that's where we are with it, and that's uh, what I'm doing with my home automation system. That's about it for this edition of the Well-Tempered Hacker. If you're interested in the software, I'll be releasing it on GitHub. Check below for links to that. Please get in touch if you're interested in building a similar system. I'd like to get as much feedback as possible and really develop it. But thanks for watching and happy hacking.